Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Since my update last week, there has been rain in central northern regions, but in much of the south, it has stayed bone dry. Now, will that change as we go through the next two weeks? I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. And at the outset, there is a brisk Atlantic flow covering the UK. It's bringing showers or longer spells of rain to much of the north and west. But in the south, it's still dry. In the short term, not a great deal changes. There could be a few spots of rain in southern counties, but I don't think it will amount to a great deal. Rain or showers in the north and northwest. But then as we go into and through the weekend, high pressure builds from the Azores once again towards the UK, increasingly settled, increasingly dry in all regions, just an ongoing risk of rain in the far north there. And that stays basically the same into the early part of next week. It's a settled outlook according to this computer model run. Looking at the air temperature profile, initially yellows and oranges over much of the UK, indicating above average values at about 1500 meters above sea level. In the short term, the greens push southeastwards across all regions, so it's turning cooler. But then as the high pressure returns, the yellows and oranges do as well, warming up towards the end of the animation there. What does that mean for temperatures down at the surface? Maximums here, 15 GMT, Wednesday the 3rd. 27, 28, 29 in central and eastern England, cooler there in the northwest. Moving forwards to Friday, so this is when the cooler air has moved down across all parts of the UK and the values of the two metre level for ones we experience are lower, so low to mid 20s here, cooler there once again in the northwest. That also means fresher nights because to begin with it's going to be muggy in central and southern Britain, not very pleasant for sleeping. But by Saturday, overnight lows quite widely down into single figures, if this is correct, just a bit higher there in the London area. But values will be starting to rise again. And by Sunday, 26, maybe 27 in central and eastern England, the south there as well cooler in the northwest, but even in eastern Scotland, northeastern England, 21 to 23, very, very respectable. And that trend continues early next week, perhaps 30 Celsius may be reached on Monday, if this is correct. The MoGreps ensemble showing temperatures for Peterborough in this instance, reflects the same trends, mid 20s to start off with, then dipping as the cooler air returns, but towards the end of the period, values are increasing, although so is the spread, as is generally the case, the further out we look, the, the, the bigger the range of solutions within the ensemble. That's the general rule. Rainfall, extremely important, of course. On the left, um, the ECM chart for days 0 to 5, on the right, GFS for the same time period. No rain at all on both of those in large parts of southern England and East Anglia. The wet conditions really restricted to the north. Moving forwards to days 0 to 10, look at those values again in the south on both of the charts. 0 millimetres, no measurable rain at all according to the GFS and the ECM in parts of the South and East Anglia. In fact, even in the North, the values haven't really increased a great deal from the 0 to 5 day charts, indicating mostly dry conditions through the days 5 to 10 part of the period. The high totals just restricted to Western Scotland. So, do the deterministic models agree with each other at the end of the first week? Here's the GFS, Tuesday, August the 9th. High pressure, the dominant feature of the UK's weather. I'll skip through these very quickly because there is a good level of consistency. The Canadian, the German Icon, the European ECM, and finally the UK Met Office Global. High pressure there centered a little bit further northeast. But all in all, 
it's a high degree of confidence that at the end of week one, it will be settled across the UK. Perhaps Atlantic disturbances just fringing the far northwest at times, leading to a risk of rain there. Dry elsewhere. Now, does that trend continue through week two? Well, as ever, it's all about looking at the ensemble data at this range and not trying to pick out the specifics. Probabilities. So I'll start with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top, a very clear signal this week, well above average. The thick purple line, the ensemble mean, stays a good way above the thick black line, the 30-year norm. Indeed, there are some very, very big anomalies in there. Some of the runs are going way above that 30-year norm potential for hot conditions. Rainfall, well, nothing really showing at all in the short term, but towards the end there, a few big spikes appear, suggesting the chance at least of thundery downpours. But with that said, those spikes are few and far between, so mostly dry conditions would be favoured even towards the end. Now, on the way up to Glasgow this week, I'm going to stop off at Manchester um, because I've been asked by some people whether I could include more central locations. Therefore, here we go. Across the top, the signal is very similar to on the London chart, well above average. The rainfall signal, also similar to begin with, of over a few more spikes there towards the end than there were on the London one, perhaps just suggesting a chance of rain which increases towards the end. Continuing the journey, Glasgow, air mass temperatures above average, but the deviation from the 30-year norm is less than it was on the Manchester and London plots. Also, in terms of rainfall, there are a few spikes early on, but it looks predominantly dry. But towards the end, from about the 13th onwards, the number of them increases markedly, so the chance of rain starts to return. It doesn't look overly wet though, even in the northwest. Two meter temperature data tables, this one for London. The pinks are the really hot runs, over 30 Celsius, but the reds, 26 to 30, well above the average as well. So the signal through the second week is clear. Temperatures at the two meter level, the ones which we experience, are very likely to be in the warm, very warm or hot categories in the south. Now going up to Manchester, again, the signal for it to be warm is strong. Fewer pink runs, fewer red runs, but, but that's to be expected as you go Northwards of the UK, temperatures are generally lower, but compared to the local averages, this looks very promising if you like warm weather. Towards the end, there may be a cooling signal there with more yellows beginning to return 16 to 20 Celsius. Up to Glasgow. Well, here the uh, oranges, which are in the 21 to 25 Celsius category, are the biggest. Uh, constituents of the columns to begin with, so it's quite warm even in the northwest of UK. Later on though, the amount of light orange and yellow increases, so there's a cooling trend there beginning to show up at 16 to 20 towards the very end. It doesn't look particularly cool by any means, just a downwards trend. I thought it would just be worth bringing up a postage stamp chart showing forecast maximum temperatures. This is on Thursday, August the 11th. 23 out of 31 runs on that chart have values reaching 30 Celsius or higher in at least one or two parts of the UK, obviously the South being strongly favoured. A good signal for it to turn very warm or hot through the second week. The 
GEFS, mean surface level pressure anomaly chart for 10 days ahead, so Friday V12, indicates high pressure being dominant, perhaps, perhaps low pressure over continental Europe may be starting to edge northwards and that would lead to an increasing chance of thunderstorms in southern Britain at least. The ECM, mean surface level pressure plot at the same time, there are differences there but the story once more is for high pressure to be having much influence. And finally the uh, data table sh showing the pressure forecast from all of the runs in the GEFS, this being for York. The trend through the second week is downwards. The amount of orange, 1,026 to 1,040 millibars, decreases. With that said though, 1,011 to 1,025, the yellows, mostly above the August average, remain dominant. So I think it's a case more of high pressure weakening towards the end rather than active areas of low pressure becoming dominant. But just a hint there of something of a change towards the very end, possibly. So to summarize, week one, cooler air pushes south eastwards through the first couple of days, but it stays dry in the south. There is a risk of rain in the north at times and perhaps the west. But later on, through the second half of the first week, it becomes increasingly settled and temperatures begin to climb once more. Week two, a strong signal at the time of filming this video for it to be mostly fine. Although towards the end, the risk of rain increases in the northwest and there is that possibility of thundery downpours beginning to affect the south. Temperatures above the average, and it could well be hot at times in southern and central regions. I didn't specifically talk about maximums, which are possible, but I wouldn't discount 33, 34, or even 35 Celsius being reached in places. So, there we have it. More dry weather in the south, a signal for it to turn very warm or hot again, the chance of temperatures peaking close to 35 Celsius. I say it's not a definite by any means, but I certainly wouldn't rule it out. If correct, the best of the summer weather, if you like the hot conditions, dry ones, may still be to come. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.